In this lesson, we will do a review of limits and continuity. There are three ways to find a limit, analytically, graphically, or numerically. Let's begin by finding the limit of the following function numerically. That means with a table, graphically and analytically. For the numerical approach, we use a table of points. Our function is the limit as x approaches 2 of x minus 2 over x squared minus x minus 2. Since we want our x value to approach 2, in the table we have x values which are getting increasingly close to 2 from both the left and the right sides. Replacing x with each of these values in the function yields the following y values. We can see that as x gets closer and closer to the value of 2, the y value appears to be getting closer to 0.3 repeating. So our numerical analysis indicates that this limit is equal to 1 over 3. Even though there's a hole in the graph at x equals 2, the function values are approaching 1 third as x approaches 2. Therefore, the value of the limit as x approaches 2 is 1 third. There's a hole in the graph at x equals 2 because when we plug 2 in for x, we will get a 0 in the denominator. This is called a removable discontinuity. The asymptote at x equals negative 2 is non-removable. We can see that the y value is approaching one-third as the x value approaches 2. The hole at x equals 2 has no impact on the value of the limit. So analytically solving this limit, if we factor the denominator, we have x minus 2 in the numerator, and in the denominator, the factors x minus 2 times x plus 1. We can cancel out the common factors of x minus 2, leaving us with the limit as x approaches 2 of 1 over x plus 1. Now we can plug in 2 for x without getting that messy 0 in the denominator. Therefore, when we plug 2 in for x, we find that this limit equals 1 third. So we've seen the numerical, the graphical, and the analytical approach to solving this limit. Here's another example. We can evaluate the above limit numerically, graphically, or analytically. I will demonstrate each method. We have the limit as x approaches negative 2 of x squared minus 4 over x cubed plus 8. For the numerical approach, let's make a table of points. Here we are choosing x values which are approaching negative 2 on both sides. In fact, I'm going to insert my negative signs here. And when we replace x with those values, we find that the y values that result are included in the table below. These values seem to be approaching negative one-third as x gets closer to negative two. Therefore, we can, we can conclude from our table that as x approaches negative two, the y value approaches negative one-third. For the graphical approach, we want to examine the graph. What is happening to the y value of the function as we get very close to the x value of negative 2 on the graph? Caution, there is actually a hole in the graph at x equals negative 2. You will not see the hole when you use your grapher. But we know it is there because if we try to plug negative 2 into the function, we will get a 0 in the denominator. However, this does not mean that there is no limit. Remember, the limit is asking what is the y value approaching as x approaches negative 2. What is happening at negative 2 makes no difference. 
even though the function is not defined when x equals negative 2, the limit does exist. As we approach negative 2 from both sides, the y value is approaching negative 1 third. The limit as x approaches negative 2 is negative 1 third. Let's look at an example involving trig. Here are two special trig limits. First, the limit as x approaches 0 of the sine of x over x equals 1. Secondly, the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 minus the cosine x over x equals 0. These two limits can often be used when simplifying trig limits. Look for them when you are attempting to analytically solve a trig limit. Here's an example. The limit as x approaches 0 of the tangent of x over x. If we try to substitute 0 in for x as is, we get tangent of 0 over 0. We can't have a 0 in the denominator. So we need to try to rewrite the function so that we can substitute 0 for x. Remember that tangent x can be rewritten as sine x over cosine x. The limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over cosine x times 1 over x is a way that we can rewrite this expression. We can break this up as the limit of sine x over x times the limit of 1 over cosine x. This is our special limit. The limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x, and this equals 1. For this second limit, we can simply replace, zero with, replace x with 0, since the cosine of 0 is 1. So we find that this limit itself is equal to 1. This can be confirmed with a graph. As the x value approaches 0, the y value approaches 1, even though there's a hole at x equals 0. Continuity and one-sided limits. A function s is continuous at a point x equals c if the following three conditions are met. First, f of c must be defined. Secondly, the limit as x approaches c of f of x must exist. And finally, f of c must equal the value of the limit as x approaches c of f of x. The graphs that follow will demonstrate how failing to meet each of the above conditions cause a function to be discontinuous at x equals c. In our first example, f of c is not defined. Our c value of x is right here. And if we look at the graph, we see that there is a hole at c. So therefore, f of c is not defined, which, and that makes this function not continuous at c. In our next, next example, at x equals c, the limit does not exist as x approaches c due to the way that the graph jumps. And that also makes the function discontinuous at c. And in our last example, the function is defined at x equals c with this little point. The limit exists as we approach c from each side. The limit is approaching a common value. However, the limit value is different from the function value. And that makes the function discontinuous. Now let's take a look at an example of a one-sided limit. Consider the piecewise function f of x equals x cubed minus 4x plus 2, when x is less than or equal to 2, and f of x equals 1 half x squared plus 1, when x is greater than 2. To graph this function, we need to use the top part to define the y values when the x value is less than or equal to 2. That would look like this. We've got that top part of the function graphed up until x equals 2. 
We need to use the bottom part of the function to define the y values when x is greater than 2. So that would look like this. What is happening to this function as x approaches 2? As we approach 2 from the left, the y value is approaching 1 value. And as we approach 2 from the right, the y value is approaching another value. Therefore, the limit as x approaches 2 from the left equals 2. This is the y value of 2. Analytically, this could be found by plugging 2 in for x on the top piece, since the top piece is giving us the part of the graph that is to the left of 2. And we see here that by replacing x with 2, the y value is 2. And that's consistent with the results on our graph. The limit of this function as x approaches 2 from the right is 3. This is the y value of 3. Analytically, this can be found by plugging 2 in for x on the bottom piece, since the bottom piece is giving us the part of the graph that is right of 2. So we have found that the limit as x approaches 2 from the left of f of x is 2. The limit as x approaches 2 from the right of f of x is 3. So what is the limit as x approaches 2? This is the two-sided limit of f of x. This limit does not exist. Because the one-sided limits are different, the limit, the two-sided limit does not exist. They must approach the same value. This is because the left and right-hand limits are different as x approaches 2. One last example. For f of x equals cosine of pi x over x minus 1, let's find the limit as x approaches 1 from the left and the limit as x approaches 1 from the right. Here is the graph of this function. As we approach 1 from the left, the y values are increasing without bound. That means that the limit as x approaches 1 from the left of f of x equals infinity. As we approach 1 from the right, the y values are decreasing without bound. This means that the value of the limit as x approaches 1 from the right of f of x equals negative infinity. A table of points can confirm this result numerically. As x approaches 1 from each side, from the left we see that the y values are getting increasingly large. And from the right we see that the y values are getting increasingly large 